Assalamu alaikum, my name is Rafa Bushala. Welcome to another episode of your event. We're here at the University of Leicester for the FOSIS Winter Conference. Everyone's here, everyone's really excited. I'm really looking forward to meeting students and ISOCs from all across the country, from Scotland, Ireland, Wales. It's gonna be a brilliant event, let's go. Now it's time to meet the main person behind this conference, the head of members relations who are involved in organising conferences twice a year, the annual summer conference and the FOSIS winter conference. With us is um, Usama Haroon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, how are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam, alhamdulillah, I'm good, alhamdulillah. So what kind of other topics have you, have you covered at this, at this conference? Um, a lot of the workshops that we're doing so, uh, currently is taking care of, I mean, um, families versus family, we also have one workshop called Mending uh, the Wounds of Islamophobia. Uh, so that also affects us as, as Muslims and affects us as, as a wider community. Um, the Islamophobia is happening and portraying it now, so that's also something that we're addressing. Uh, we're addressing student advocacy, so getting students involved within the students' union, um, getting Muslim students involved in the project that they do. Uh, another one we also have is um, building eco-friendly ISOCs. So it builds in with the theme, so how can ISOCs go green? How can ISOCs support the environment, society. So that's another workshop that we, another topic that we have um, also. For cities, democratic structures are incredibly important regarding the concept of accountability. Each and every one of the individuals elected or those who have served the organization or want to serve the organization need to be held to a standard, need to be questioned, they need to be held to account regarding the work that they have done because these are the people that represent you. These are the people that are representing Muslim students all across the country, in, U in the UK and Ireland, to ensure that they're able to do their work properly. They need to know what your priorities are and they need to be told by you what their priorities are. And you need to ask them about what work they'll do. Assalamu alaikum Layla, how are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam, thank you for inviting me to talk. I'm basically in charge of all the Midland ISOCs, um, so within my region. Um, I have to be able to um, give, uh, deliver them support, um, help them with aid, aid visit them, um, just see how they are, attend their events, establish a connection. So student affairs in a nutshell is essentially doing the student political advocacy work. So providing support for Muslim students on the ground, on their local campuses, and also supporting them on a national level, working with stakeholders involved in higher education, further education, whether it's the government, whether it's institutions like the NUS, Universities UK, and addressing issues, but also advocating for provisions to ensure that they benefit in the higher education, further education um, institutions and the sector as a whole, and ensure that the education experience that they have is one that's very fulfilling and one that maximizes their potential. Assalamualaikum, so my name is Arima and I'm from Glasgow, like you said. So my experience lies within the Student Affairs kind of committee. So as part of that, you know, we've been helping different ISOCs actually be able to like get halal food on campuses, being able to implement good prayer spaces. Um, if prayer spaces aren't adequate or maybe some universities don't have prayer spaces at all. And I think work like that is incredibly rewarding because you're able to see the impact of what you do. Assalamu alaikum. So my name's Naira. I'm also from Glasgow University and I'm in my final year. I joined the ISOC back when I was a fresher and I spent a few years there and slowly progressed towards FOSIS as well. And over the last five years, I've developed so much. And at this point, being involved in FOSIS, I want to give back to the ISOCs and develop them as well. What made you join the organisation? Um, I've been part of my Islamic society for quite a while. Um, and I know the help and FOSIS has given us in terms of all the support that we have with them. And I just wanted to maybe see if I can give back to them in ways that I can uh, and help support and organise conferences as I'm doing now, alhamdulillah. Why did you first get involved in your ISOC? I feel like it's, a, it, it's offered almost like an alternative halal lifestyle. So now I'm involved with talks, I go to events, first getting me closer to my religion and also getting me to learn more about what Allah wants from me and uh, also it helps in other ways socialising, meeting Muslims on campus. So like coming into university I started to kind of I was, I was you know, looking for that kind of um, 
community sense, you know, and that's why the ISOC was so like important for me. I wanted to be part of something bigger and to have that kind of community and be, you know, be involved in the sense where I could have my own kind of input and maybe inshallah, you know, provide um, the same kind of community aspect for people, you know, um, in first year and incoming students. So that's one of the reasons why I um, wanted to be part of FOSIS Ireland. One of the main reasons that I'm still in FOSIS because, like I say, it's not just you see the work manifest itself in like Muslim communities and I, and it's amazing and actually being able to like hear from other people and saying oh by the way like you know uni life is a little bit better because we have halal foods we have somewhere to pray it's 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 really rewarding I wanted to be part of that project part of that team to make sure I can deliver um, a conference as good as the ones I've been to if you're wary come give it a try you're not going to lose anything I mean, one of the reasons why I initially joined FOSIS was I think you very quickly realise the potential of Muslim students. You realise that these guys are often studying some of the best universities in the world. They're doing lots of different things on the ground. They're raising hundreds of thousands for charity. They're creating all these different projects for homeless people, uh, doing eco-friendly projects, everything. Like everything under the sun you can think of and ISOC generally tries and attempts to do. One thing uh, I feel like is really important is to people to always be around good friends and people to always be around good people that will motivate them in this day and age to stay on the Dean, stay on stay on the right path basically. FOSIS encourages a lot of projects where um, Muslims can contribute not just to other fellow Muslims but to the wider non-Muslim uh, community as well and as a result that serves as Dawah um, and ISOCs develop a lot through doing that work as well. I think the community needs to realise that FOSIS is run by students. We are all under the age of 25, pretty much most of us. FOSIS is the place where young people transition from university life to the real life and this is where the real development of young people do happen and uh, as a result of that development uh, you have the new uh, future leaders of our community being developed through FOSIS and the student scene through our, uh, the amazing work that our Islamic societies do across 121 universities across seven different regions. impact do you believe FOSIS has in the community? You can think about it in, in three different ways. One is to develop those future leaders so we can have that better and brighter Muslim leadership in the future inshallah uh, and that leadership will then produce new leaders and new leaders and so FOSIS is the uh, source of talent and leaders in our community. We do develop the leaders of um, the future generations because if you look at like inshallah when when people do a few years of ISO do a few years of FOSIS and then like they they can become like the community leaders or they can be part of big organizations like MAB or MCB um, we can and and they have like big roles in society it just shows how like FOSIS has an impact on making these Muslims even greater than they already are so the impact that these conferences have and that FOSIS has in general is, is nationwide and it's very important for the young people in today's society. What skills have you both gained during your time in forces that have allowed you to now give back within the community? Emotional intelligence is definitely one of them. Um, leadership, you gain you gain a lot of leadership skills and you don't have to have a title to gain good leadership skills. You, you develop this uh, through working in different teams and just different people as well. Good emotional intelligence, but also patience is such a big one. Resilience, perseverance, I'm sure, and I would agree. All like amazing skills, also being able to express and articulate yourself like as best you can, trying to communicate with other people in a way that you know is actually accessible and in a way that they can understand you. It actually helps you like manage your time really well because uh, you think that oh you're going to get super busy and you're not going to be able to do as much when you take on like added responsibility, but because you have so much on, it forces you to really like segment your time and say, oh no, this part's going to go to uni, this part's going to go to FOSIS, and you have to have like a wee part for like your family. And it really like, it really adds to like your organisational skills and timekeeping skills. It makes an immense difference. So that's one thing. And the other thing is to connect that, those leaders and provide those accessible pathways uh, from tr transitioning from a student to uh, real life. And actually, people who are confident comfortable in their skin, understanding their purpose in life. You, you see the people around you grow and a lot of it comes from the experiences they get from uh, working on the ground, working with other Muslims, working with other people, um, 
who are a lot older than them, even myself, being a director of FOSIS over the last year has been a massive learning curve because all of a sudden I'm sitting around a in, a, in a room around a table with people who've, you know, they've made their millions or they've led, you know, huge charities and huge organisations. There I am, a 20-something year old, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, trying to be a, a, a thinker and so on and so forth. So you see yourself grow and you see others grow and I think that's what the community and that's what forces can give, develop people who then can go out and be themselves an institution, a pillar of the deen, a pillar of the community. And as long as we have strong and multiple pillars, then the house is strong. We've helped to support and get elected the first Muslim female president of the NUS. We have had over 40 Muslim sabbatical officers elected. We've run a delegate drive with many, many Muslim students, a hundred plus elected to represent Muslim students on the biggest stage or biggest voice or democratic platform in the UK, which is the NUS National Conference. Not only that, we've supported Islamic societies to secure prayer rooms. We've supported Islamic societies to get rid of draconian policies, but also draconian obstacles and uh, structures that propagate ideas of securitization that spy on Muslim students. So why are such conferences important in this day and age for Muslim youth? So I feel like in the climate, in the climate we're currently in, um, with the rise of Islamophobia, etc., it's vital that there's a support structure um, for young Muslim students. And a way of doing that is these conferences where it's an opportunity for all the young students to come from all, from all across the nation. The issues that Muslim students face are actually a, a, wide, a, a smaller reflection of the wider issues of the Muslim community. We face the same issues, Islamophobia prevent everything that our wider Muslim community face. But there are also some specific Muslim issues, uh, obviously lack of uh, development, uh, lack of attention from the wider community and then Muslim students when they do leave university there isn't necessarily a place for them in the community so uh, we need to create that bridge between ourselves and the community to, to close that gap. The main theme of this YES conference is caretakers of the earth and you wanted to go through the four main aspects of taking care of yourself, your environment, your community and the wider society. Forces just look like the next natural stage in relation to that because the, the role of FOSIS is that isn't it, it's an umbrella organisation that represents the interests and the voice and the needs of Muslim students up and down the country and what it does is it does that through uniting the ISOCs together, providing them with relevant services and especially for FOSIS our work pretty much covers three areas, uh, development of Muslim students and ISOCs, um, advocacy work which is very much looking at protecting the rights of Muslim students, preserving their identity and promoting their interests in society and the final part is faith inspired activism which is basically ensuring that Muslim students, when they go out and do different forms of activism, whatever that may be, it comes from a point of faith and Iman, um, and they do it as conscious, proud, confident Muslims. for the community. What can the community do to help support FOSIS in its work? Well first believe in what we do uh, and obviously support us uh, from a resource perspective. If you have something to offer to our Muslim students please come speak to us and we, we can there's plenty to do and so we can do with it uh, with the expertise and the experience that a lot of people in our community do. Second obviously we need that uh, financial support from our community so it's very important when you donate something to FOSIS, you're donating to develop the future leaders of our community. You're not just to put in a pound that's it's not going to have any impact. It's going to probably have the most impact out of many, many Muslim organizations. So, um, and if you can't do any of these two, all we ask you is to make a sincere dua for us to, to make our job easy. It's not so, like Allah. Um, and one thing that the community can do is look at that courage and that zeal that we have and help us direct it in the most meaningful way. I think that's really, really important. And the second thing is to continue to support us. Um, it's, it can be, it can feel quite disheartening when you feel like your uncles and your aunties and all these other organisations in the community, they're just looking at us like A, we're a bunch of kids, or B, they're just sort of going out of their space. Um, you know, end of the day, we're always told we are the future. And if we change one person's life in this conference, and if one person uh, benefits from it, and that's, that's our job kind of completed. <laughs> I think it's very, very important to make our voice heard. We are not just 
people, we're not bystanders, we are active participants, we are citizens and we are people who do belong in civic society and so therefore we need to ensure that our priorities are being met and ensure that we're being re represented adequately but also show people that look, we are Muslims, we're Islam, we're no different from you, we're human and that is part of the whole integration process and part of the pluralism that we try and advocate for. I think that is the best, best way to summarise it, like Falsus is in the business of people not projects. Alhamdulillah, that's the end of conference. Amazing speakers, some truly incredible individuals and just an amazing atmosphere. Um, until next time, that's FOSIS Winter Conference 19th year. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.